Hello, and welcome to another episode in our Let Us series, part of our Sisterhood TV. I'm so glad you joined us today. Well, we've covered a lot of different exhortations in this series. And so just briefly, we've covered already, let us fear, let us labor to enter into his rest, let us draw near to God, let us hold firmly to the faith, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, let us mature and let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds. And so we are now entering two more um, exhortations that we have in this series. And I'm going to read today from Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3 out of the NIV. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Oh, friends, what powerful scriptures. And I got to tell you personally, these verses are extremely important to me. Uh, I know some of you have heard this story, but I really want to share this with you. It may encourage some of you today. This was many years ago. I was going through such a struggle, like emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you name it. And I felt myself like caving in under the circumstances, trying to make sense of it, trying to keep my head above water. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. But I, I literally found myself spiraling downward. And I know I, I was desperate to find a way out of this vortex that I felt that I was in. And so I got alone with God. Now that's a key for you gals. If you are going through something, you have got to be desperate enough, set aside the time and get alone with God and ask him for a word. He is so faithful, friends. He will do it. So for me personally, these verses was the word that God spoke into my heart. And let me tell you, it totally broke free for me. Uh, I, my circumstances didn't change automatically, but I changed because I got my focus back where it needed to be. And so I'm just sharing that little uh, story of mine. It was a crisis of faith that God once again broke through on my behalf. And I am confident he will break through for you as well. The verses may be different, but these are the verses who impact, that impacted my life. Within that first verse, we see the, the two exhortations that we are going to examine today. The writer of Hebrews makes a very clear reference to competing in a race. Keep in mind that even back then, the Olympics were already taking place. If you've ever watched the Olympics on TV, I'm sure you've been amazed by what uh, these amazing athletes and the human body is capable of doing. Think about this. Most of those athletes have trained for this moment their entire lives. They, they had hard hours, their bones, I'm sure their muscles were screaming and aching, long hours. It involves sacrifice. Maybe they had to say no to some other more pleasurable things in order to dive into this. But think about it. It was for an event that lasted only a few minutes. Their sacrifice was enormous, all for a single goal, a gold medal and worldwide recognition that they were the best in their field. These words were spoken by Scott Hamilton, Olympic skater, shortly after winning his gold medal. It was a moment to be shared. Someone asked me why I was looking at the medal so intently. What I was doing was looking at 16 years of my life. Wow, that's pretty profound, isn't it? 
Friends, we are striving toward an eternal reward and more importantly, recognition by God, not just by the world and a human standard. So I ask you, are we as willing to make the appropriate sacrifices and to practice the necessary disciplines in order to achieve that eternal reward? Wow, now that's a question, isn't it? We have a more important prize than mere gold and more important recognition that, than just what the world may consider. Are we taking then seriously our walk with God? The Bible teaches that we must be prepared to examine and discipline our lives appropriately if we are to be a true disciple of Christ. Salvation is not just a momentary experience at the altar. It is a lifestyle as well. These two exhortations deal with two things, our discipline and our focus. And so first, let's look a little more at our discipline. Notice that in this text I read to you, hindrance and in other translations, it's known as weight. So weight and sin are intentionally separated here. A weight is not necessarily a sin, but it is something that can easily lead to sin. There are things we do as Christians that hinder our run, even though these things in and of themselves are not wrong. You know, for instance, um, although jeans, a nice coat, and a good pair of boots may be great, these things are not a good thing. They're hindrances to a runner, right? Perhaps then, friends, you're wearing the hindrance of an unhealthy friendship. Maybe you're wearing a coat of pointless entertainment, or you have on boots of an unhealthy habit. There are many different hindrances to running a, a race well and developing our full potential. Too many commitments is one that keeps us from developing our potential. Letting other people control us keeps us from achieving our potential. Not knowing how to say no keeps us from developing our potential. Notice in just those couple of instances, we're talking boundaries there. Now, that's a whole other topic, but seriously, we need to set healthy boundaries in our lives to avoid that. So that that we can develop our potential, <clears throat> pardon me, getting overly involved in someone else's goals and vision or becoming entangled in someone else's problems instead of keeping our eyes on our own goals. That also will keep us from fulfilling our potential, friends. This is the essence of self-discipline. It is our responsibility before God to cast aside those things that become serious extra baggage in our lives. No serious runner would ever consider carrying around extra baggage when they're competing to win. In fact, I found this interesting. Back in the day when the Olympic Games were first started, those men would would literally strip all of their clothing away and they would run their race in just a loincloth. <laughs> now, I hope they tied it tightly, right? Anyway, self-discipline is needed to even get started. I love how one writer puts it. I spent a fortune on a trampoline, a stationary bike, and a rowing machine complete with gadgets to read my pulse and gadgets to prove my progress results and others to show the miles I've charted. But they left off the gadget <laughs> to get started. <laughs> if only there were, were a gadget for that, right? We can be inspired and motivated by considering the great cloud of witnesses that we find in Hebrews chapter 11. Their examples witness to us that we can and should be fervent and faithful, friends. It's almost as if the writer has in mind the champions that he just got done mentioning in chapter 11. And like the Olympics, they are standing before us with their medals or their wreaths or their crowns, whatever it is, spurring us to dream on, to dream of winning as well. 
Unlike the Olympics, however, running the race in spiritual terms is not to try to be first, but to be faithful and to finish. Jesus becomes the perfect example for us to follow. He followed the course with joy, even though it included pain and suffering. And why? Because of the goal before him, which was our salvation. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> we talked about discipline. Now let's talk about our focus. Anyone who runs a race must be focused. I remember back in the day when I was on a, a track team, I remember the coach drumming into us, look straight ahead, don't get distracted, don't look behind, don't look to the sides, look ahead to the goal line. Jesus is our ultimate example to observe. He emptied himself of all weights that would hinder his progress. In the final stages of his race, he faced death, hell, and the grave. He finished his race and he won, glory to God. He is victorious. He has taken his place in heaven. He has sat himself down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse two of our text tells us that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We are in this race of life together with him. That's good news. Him as the author, he began this journey of faith with us. And as the finisher, oh, I gotta tell you friends, I picture him at the finish line waiting for me with open arms saying to me all the while, you can do this, come on, I believe in you. Fix your eyes on me, you will make it, amen. Some final thoughts I wanna leave with you before we close out today. We are to consider the rewards that so outstrip the sacrifices so that we do not become weary and lose heart. The Christian race is not a competitive event to see who comes in first, but it's an endurance run to see who finishes faithfully. The pursuit of spiritual maturity requires discipline and focus in our lives. It is possible to get saved and to not grow, and how pitiful that really would be. We must, like a good athlete, learn to be responsible for our own growth in the Lord. Now, obviously, through our church, we make a lot of different resources available to you, and that is a way that you can take responsibility in your own growth. No athlete succeeds without discipline and focus, and no believer will succeed without this either. Let's make it our goal to say like Paul in 2 Timothy 4 verses 7 and 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all have, who have longed for his appearing. I want to close in prayer today, and as I was preparing for this, I felt such a burden to pray for those of you who may have been like me at the beginning of this message where I, I shared my own journey of a crisis of faith. You may be looking at this today and feeling overwhelmed by your circumstances, and you've been losing heart, or you've been losing your focus. I want to pray for you today. Let's close. Father God, Lord, you know the lives. You know the circumstances of the women who are watching this today. God, you know uh, what has been going on in their minds, in their hearts, in their circumstances of life. Father God, may you, like you did for me, speak a word that will bring encouragement, break through on their behalf, God. And as they heard this word today, to be disciplined and to be focused, Father God, I pray a fresh result 
resolve that, that would fall on each of these gals, a fresh resolve to be disciplined, to avail themselves of the growth that is possible in studying your word and gathering with others and keeping their eyes upon you, the author and finisher of our faith. God, thank you that we're not in this alone, but you are there with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we are a sisterhood. We're in this together, and together we can help each other.